If you squint a little bit at your work emails or documents, you've probably noticed M dashes, formulaic sentence structures, and lists of three items coming out of your colleagues' writing. I'm Alex. I've worked in big tech at companies like Tesla and Microsoft for over 10 years, and I like sharing my thoughts on the tech industry's latest trends or news. I came across a wild example today on the bug bounty board Hacker One. If you aren't very familiar, a bug bounty board is sort of just a place where individuals or security researchers can submit and report issues or bugs that they've found in any particular piece of software. So companies will actually sponsor these bug bounty programs and will pay people who find real reproducible vulnerabilities in their products. So for example, you know, Spotify would pay someone who found out they could uh, get past the Spotify premium paywall or something like that. And this is great because on both sides, a company doesn't have infinite resources to find problems or issues and individuals don't necessarily want to work at every company in the world, but they might still want to be able to find problems with them and individuals can get paid and make a living off that and companies can make their products more secure with this pen testing or vulnerability finding. This can be extremely lucrative. Uh, I visited Black Hat, which is the biggest hacker conference in the world uh, a couple of years ago, and I met a guy who made his full income, you know, solely off of bug bounties. And he told me that he made uh, mid six figures, which, you know, if true is, is pretty impressive. And keep in mind, he was probably a top 1% in the industry, but there's a lot of money and success to be made in finding bugs and security issues. Anyway, back to this crazy example. The user reported a buffer overflow vulnerability in the curl library's cookie parsing logic. Don't worry too much about all those words and the jargon, but the TLDR is this user, you know, reportedly said he found a way to remotely execute any kind of code he wanted on any product or software that was using the curl library, which is a very common library used in networking for a lot of these different products. So this was a pretty big deal, you know, if true. That means basically every application on the internet that was using curl was at risk of being hacked. And on the surface, when we look at this uh, report, it looks, you know, pretty clean and, and well formatted. You know, it's got a lot of things going on here. But when you kind of inspect it for a few minutes and when you scratch the surface a little bit and, you know, peel back the layers of the onion, it's completely bogus. The code does not even call the library in question. If you look at the POC, it's literally just a C file that does a few random things, you know, allocates an array, overflows it, and then returns. It's not doing anything whatsoever with the software itself. And even a first year university student could probably read this file and realize that it's completely bogus. The incredible part is that after there was a little bit of pushback from the curl staff member, the user replied with one of the most generic AI responses I've ever seen. The if help helpful part is directly the LLM talking to him. It's not even a response to the curl staff member. It just, you know, clearly shows that he copy and pasted that out of the chat GPT terminal. The sad part is you can look at recent hacker one submissions and find dozens of these slop like AI found vulnerabilities. So why are people doing this? Well, Aside from the obvious, which is, you know, money, if they are able to actually blindly use AI to fully find a real bug, they could get paid for that in theory, which I think is, you know, very unlikely, but it could theoretically happen. But the bigger reason and the reason I think why we're seeing so many more of these AI slop submissions in Hacker One. The reason is I think people want that resume bolstering bullet point. They want to be able to say, I, Alex, found a vulnerability in Google Chrome, or I found an issue in you know the iPhone calendar app, and I reported it and got it fixed. It, it looks good on paper, and a lot of you know desperate job seekers, whether they want to go into security research or just software engineering, need more padding on their resume. And this is an unfortunately kind of easy, hacky way to potentially find something like that. This has become an exhausting problem in the bug bounty space. There's just a litter of submissions full of AI slop. But unfortunately, it's not limited to just that area. If your algorithm on social media is anything like mine, I think half the ads I get today on the internet are, you know, shovel sellers with messages like, we have reached a point where anyone can build an app without knowing how to code. And while that's true, it doesn't lead to good secure apps. It doesn't lead to new innovative ideas. It leads to the simplest, most basic possible working functionality that implies that copying and pasting from an LLM is the right thing to do. And copying and pasting uh, for almost any task seems to be the unfortunate norm right now, not only on the internet, but even at work. There's a blog by that very same curl staff member outlining his frustrations called Death by a Thousand Slops, which I think is a fantastically apt title and I highly recommend you check it out. Over time, I've personally gotten a feel for what kind of content is AI generated, and I'm sure you have too. 
I can't help but wonder where the current balance lies of time saved for me versus time wasted for everyone else in using AI responses. At work, I've noticed the average lengths of documents has gone up dramatically. Meeting notes, which used to be kind of terse bullet points, are now just a wall of text full of information, hard to parse. Emails have a suspicious number of M dashes or words like delve in them. It's, it's a terrible time to be the one of five people who actually paid attention in your literature and writing classes. Don't get me wrong, I find AI tremendously helpful for a number of things. Claude Code is amazing, Gemini Deep Research, for getting something from zero to one. I think prototyping in AI's current state is actually where the strengths really lie. But there must always be a human in the loop to truly derive real value from it. We can't become a society that just solely communicates via control C plus control V to LLMs. That would be a perfect capitalistic machine that just converts energy into dollars. I guess what I'm saying is we're we're following a slippery slope right now, and I'm seeing it more and more every day, both professionally and privately. I do think there is still potential for AI to live up to the hype that we're all hearing about, but it needs to be surrounded by guardrails, you know, informed, careful, doubtful users, humans in the loop to actually generate value. Whether we come up with other AI tools that will help identify when AI is being used or is unsafe or didn't think through something all the way or people just become a little more judicious and skeptical. It remains to be seen, but I think there is potential here. It's just very obvious that we can tell when you are using AI. What about you? Have you seen blatant AI responses more often at your work or online? Let me know in the comments below.